Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rydale series, 115 parishes covering a huge area of North Yorkshire between York and Scarborough. It's a beautiful area, so let's have a look at it. Hello folks, welcome back to Rydale once again. Now, if you thought Whitwell on the Hill was a small village last time out, this one's even smaller. This is basically just two roads and a church. Nothing much more than that. So, a short walk early in the morning, stretch the legs, fresh air in your lungs. Welcome to Foston. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Foston, Fotter's Farmstead. This one surprised me a little bit. On the map, if you take one look at the village of Foston, just west of the A64, you'd likely think there's nothing here. True, it only has two streets and not very much in the way of housing, but this one is a classic case of a village whose detail lies within what you can't see, or at least not very easily. It might only be a tiny speck on the Yorkshire landscape now, but several centuries ago, Foston was a very important village. It was at least three times the size of its current incarnation because there was a moated monastic grange here that had jurisdiction over the land, not only in Foston, but also in Terrington, thornton le clay Huntington and Flaxton, a massive area. By 1167, Foston had been granted to St Mary's Abbey in York by Count Stephen of Abermale. Nothing remains of the grange or the other buildings that would have been central to its cause, but there are earthworks all over the place. Most are on private land, but sections of this walk reveal a few. It's thought the only building left from those days is All Saints Church, which retains some 12th century fabric. In much later times, Foston was the home of the acclaimed English writer Sidney Smith, who was also the rector from 1806 until 1829. So in essence, less is more here. Let's go exploring. Welcome to Foston, a village that consists of two streets, Foston Lane and Partridge Hill. This is the former, a narrow country road that runs south towards the A64. Most of its housing is clustered around a junction at its northern end. West of this road, behind the houses, is a moated site, which in the 12th century formed part of a complex centred on a manor house. That house formed the core of a monastic grange and Foston Village was built around it, and it was at least three times the size of the modern settlement. There are earthworks in the fields in pretty much every direction here. Foston is less important now, but despite its size, it still has a bus service. The number 182, run by Rydale Community Transport, serves Foston very infrequently and connects the place to Moulton. So this is the main street and it's called Partridge Hill. Technically, there is a third street here too, but Ash Crescent, these houses seen here, don't have an actual road. In total, Foston has less than 20 dwellings. The population is around 50, but its figure is recorded with Whitwell on the hill. There's still a community though. At the village centre is a notice board and a phone box with a defib machine. So let's leave a card on this board then. It just goes to show that no matter how small your place is, if you've got a community, 
you uh, you tend to have one of these boards. Now this is an interesting board, this actually, because it's not a pin board, and I haven't got to use blue tack. It's magnetic. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love I love ones like this, unusual things. So there we go. There you go. There's a card on the Foston Parish notice board. Now just close her up. You're surprised how many of these boards actually do open for people to put stuff in. To be honest with you. There we go. That's that done. Now then, there's only really one landmark in Foston, and that would be its church. You'll have gathered already by now that uh, the place is, is generally residential. Once you get past this parish notice board and past this phone box, you're then heading out towards the A64, and really the only thing of note up there is the church. So let's walk up there and check that out. As you venture towards the church, look right through this gap and you'll see some of the ancient earthworks from the days when Foston was much larger. In the 1980s, some of these earthworks around the village, footprints of the ancient dwellings, were turned into arable fields, reclaiming the land for modern use. The houses here today, though, shouldn't be overlooked, mind you. Although not massive in number, I found Foston's property to be quite charming and very pretty. It's certainly a village whose residents strive to maintain it. And who can blame them? A few more steps and you find yourself on a public right-of-way that cuts through the churchyard on its way into the countryside beyond. This is a slightly elevated churchyard, so that countryside can be seen quite clearly. The land falls away into a shallow valley, revealing this wonderful view. Guess what though, it's not all farmland down there. There are earthworks in those fields too, unsurprising given the size of the place in the 12th century. So to the church then. All Saints, it's believed, is the only building in Foston these days that has any remaining 12th century material. Foston has had a church since at least the time of Doomsday. There was certainly one in Norman times. The present building is largely 15th century, but it was heavily restored and extended in 1911. However, it sits on 12th century foundations, likely laid down by St Mary's Abbey in York, who had control over the area by 1167. Inside, there's a bronze memorial to Sidney Smith, the rector from 1806 until 1829. Smith was an acclaimed writer, and it was he who founded a magazine called the Edinburgh Review. He's best remembered, though, for his rhyming recipe for salad dressing. And really, folks, that is Foston in a nutshell. All that's left uh, are these houses right opposite the church. It's a bit of a shame that the, uh, the church actually isn't open, despite the fact there is a sign there that says historic church open. I would have liked a little snoop around in that one, but uh, you know, can't help it. If it's not open, it's not open. And from this point, all we need to do is walk back to where we started, down this road here. Oh, look out, there's two cars coming. It's a bit like rush hour, this, in, uh, in Boston. <laughs> I think these two cars are two of the only three vehicles I've seen um, since I've been here, which tells you just how quiet this place is. So that's quite cool, isn't it? It is a nice quiet place though. All you can hear really in the background is, is birdsong. And I think that's lovely, quite frankly. But that's Rydale all over. We know, we know full well that this is a, a lovely part of Yorkshire, don't we? So let's head back to the car and move on to the next one. There is one final thing to talk about. Beyond the church is Foston Hall, and these are its gates. It's the largest and grandest house in the place today, and second only to the church in terms of age. The hall was built in 1825 for Francis Simpson, but it has much earlier origins. Its site is said to be that of a second manor house, different and likely later than the one at the monastic grange. Who Francis Simpson was, by the way, I've no idea. A search for his name revealed nobody bearing any relevance to Foston Hall. The hall was later bought by the Wormald family who made their money from the boom in the wool industry of the Old West Riding and chose this village as their country seat. Now, fun fact to finish, Foston sometimes goes by a different name, Foston Le Clay, but that suffix was dropped officially a long time ago. However, it still forms part of the next village, so let's go there and see what it means. I'll meet you back here in seven days' time.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.